Good morning, guys. So it is a move day here in uh, Estes Park, Colorado. A little bittersweet. This is a very nice place. We had a really good time here. Uh, we brought you as much as we could, uh, but it's time to move on. It's time to move on with the journey. Next stop, Rawlings, Wyoming for a one night stop and then off to Grand Tetons National Park. But I'll give you guys an update on some other things as soon as I get on the road. So what's up guys? I said I was gonna give you guys a uh, update while we were on the road, but uh, I don't know, we got to talking and stuff like that. It was a four hour drive uh, and I really never got around to uh, giving you guys an update. So I'm actually gonna give you guys an update now. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned two different things that I had two updates. So if you guys have been following along you know that I had an issue with uh, with some brakes. Well, at this last campground that I was at, you know, I got to thinking and I said, I, I don't know why a coach that only has, I want to say maybe 15,000 miles altogether in two seasons or 12,000 miles, I, I don't know why it would experience brake issues. So those of you that have been following along know that I had the brake issues. So I just I just couldn't figure that something like that would happen with such uh, little mileage. So I figured, you know what? Let me check the other uh, the other tires. So I uh, I popped off the other tires, and this is what I found. I'll show you these pictures. Um, I don't know if they I don't know if it was the use of inferior products uh, when it comes to these things. Uh, I don't I don't know what the answer is I don't have the answer because uh, I, I happen to have a Keystone product and I'm having issues with with you know I've had issues with my uh, with my unit but then you talk to somebody who has a grand design they have issues you talk to somebody who has a forest river they have issues they're all the same they're all the same so what I did is I went ahead and ordered uh, the uh, well as you could tell one of the one of the calipers is totally done. It, it 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 got heated so much that it welded. The heat actually melted or welded the the piston, the cylinder, to the back of the uh, the brake pad. Now, granted, I have last year, last season, I did a lot of uh, mountains and stuff like that, and you know the brakes the, uh, get you know they they get a lot of work. And when people say that you're going up and down mountains. And the the brakes heat up I'm assuming that's what happened here so I ordered four new calipers with the brake pads those are coming in not at this next stop that we're at because right now we're at a place right off of I-80 a place called Rawlings Wyoming we're en route to to uh, the Grand Tetons National Park so you know we're stopped here for the night I don't remember if the calipers or or the brake pads are coming into this next place whatever that's the updates on the brakes when those things come in I may or may not show you guys a, a little bit of footage of of how I change those things uh, but again it, it goes back to my original statement always that if you're not a little handy and you don't know uh, uh, you don't know what you're doing this could this could get costly real quick uh, unless of course you got a friend by the name of Vic that I can pick up the phone and call and he can give me a little bit of guidance. I'm a little handy, I'm very handy actually, but when it comes to mechanical issues and, and stuff like that, that guy, uh, the guy's a stud. So everybody needs a friend like him. But that's, that's one issue. Second issue, I mentioned in a video, I think it was last video or something like that, I mentioned about Yellowstone National Park. So Yellowstone National Park, it's been all over the news. Uh, Yellowstone National Park had some some flooding a couple of weeks back and basically the upper loop the northern loop of Yellowstone National Park lost some roads they got washed out they're gone there's no access to there so the north end of Yellowstone National Park is closed now that was 
you know, I told you guys that it may may not impact our our, our trip there because we are we are heading out to Yellowstone this season, but we decided that they opened up the South Loop yesterday. It's open up. There are some restrictions. Uh, it goes by the uh, by the tag of your vehicle. You know, odd numbers on odd days of the month, even numbers on even days of the month. Whatever. It's open. It's open, and we're going to take advantage of it, and we're going to go. So Yellowstone, we're only going to be able to do half of it. But I figure if you come out this far, half of Yellowstone is better than none of it. So that's a good thing. That's where we're heading. Now, while I am on the topic of giving you guys updates, again, I always say that I give you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly. So we arrive here at the, uh, at the campground. It's, you see it right back there. It's called Desert, uh, Red Desert, or what is it? Yeah, Red Desert Rose Campground. 25 bucks, nothing spectacular. It's got power, electric, and, and sewer. No big deal. But I get here to the campground, and I plug everything in. I always check the power pole first. I check everything. Everything's working fantastic. I go ahead and plug in the coach. I go inside. My air conditioners aren't working. None of the air conditioners are working. The microwave isn't working. Anything that requires 120 volt, because you know these things run on 12 volts, so everything 12 volt inside is working. But nothing, nothing related, no, nothing 120 is working. Now, had this been somebody other than me, you probably worry. You'd probably be worried right now. But this is the third time that this has happened to us okay since having our unit now mind you we're only going on 18 months of owning this unit this happened to me this is the third time and every single time other than that it's been the automatic transfer switch that busted so i'm going to pull off the cover now i'm going to check it with the voltmeter and i'm almost positive that that's exactly what it was and one way to troubleshoot it because we have the ability to do so is very simple. I turned on my generator. As soon as I turned on the generator, everything in the coach worked just fine, which tells me that the leg of the automatic transfer switch, which is the, the power, the, the uh, shore power side is busted. So now I'm gonna do another hack. I'm gonna go underneath there. I'm, first I'm gonna check it to make sure that that's it. And if it is it, the way to fix it so we can move along is basically take the generator offline, switch the cables and use the generator side of the automatic transfer switch, put it to the shoreline and we'll be up and running. But there is another part of the ugly side of RVing. They break all the time, things, things break and you just got to know how to fix it. So that's it. Tomorrow we're on the move and we'll be in Grand Tetons National Park, God willing. All right, so this is the inside of the automatic transfer switch which I showed you a picture there is made by Southwire. Now mind you, this is the second one. The original one that came with the coach was one from Progressive Dynamics. This is Southwire, a different company altogether. So this side right here that you see, by the way, this is hot right now. This side right here is the 120 shore power coming in. This side right here is the generator, the, the wiring for the generator. And this side right here is what feeds the panel inside the coach, okay? Both sides of the panel inside the coach. Now, right now, it is plugged in, so there should be power going into the coach. If I test it like this, that should read 120, okay, going into the coach. But it's not. However, if I test this side of the panel, which is the coming in, there you go right there. 120 so it's 120 there well I just showed you 120 there and I showed you the other side of the panel 
120 there, which basically tells me that the power coming in from the shore is perfect. It's just not getting through this. This is busted. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that line, those wires over there, switch it over here, take the generator offline, and we should be back in service. That's it. It's a mess. But it is what it is. Got to do what we got to do. So there, there you have it. That's the generator leg. It's been pulled offline. I'll just let those wires sit there. There is the shore power that used to be up here. Now is down here. So the power is going to come in through here. And you see this jumper? This jumper is to feed this piece on the coach side. So if everything works out correctly, once I hit the power, in about 20 seconds, this thing will it'll, it'll make a big sound, a clank, and we should be up and running inside. But before I put everything back, I'm going to give it a shot. There you have it. It worked exactly the way it was designed to work, except that now we are on the generator line, but the coach doesn't know any difference. We're on the generator line and everything inside should work. Which it does, because I already checked it. So good morning, it is another day. We are getting ready to head out, bright and early, heading over to Tetons National Park. Uh, just outside the Tetons National Park, a place called Moran, Moran, Wyoming. Uh, real close to Jackson Hole and right outside the Tetons. A little update in case I forgot to mention yesterday in regards to the automatic transfer switch. So basically all I did, for those of you that care, all I did was just get us back on the road and get us comfortable because now everything in the rig works. However, that problem is not fixed. Now comes the arduous task of arguing with the manufacturer because mind you, the automatic transfer switch that just broke that was in there, is only 10 months old. So now comes the task of arguing with them and see if they'll replace it. If not, uh, for those of you wondering, it's about another 102, or about another 260 bucks to order the part and get it delivered somewhere where we're at. But that's it. That's the update. We're on the road. All right. So we made it to Moran, Wyoming, which is a little town about a mile outside of Grand Tetons National Park. Let me tell you something. The drive yesterday, or the, yeah, the drive yesterday from from Estes Park to Rawlings, Wyoming, really nothing to see. Okay, a whole lot of driving with a whole lot of nothing. Uh, nothing against Wyoming, just that drive, there really wasn't nothing. This morning, we left Rawlings and we drove all the way to here. And again, really nothing much to see in the entire drive with the exception of the last 50 or 60 miles. Absolutely beautiful drive. The last 50, 60 miles, we came straight up 287 from Rollins and then came across 26. And this campsite that we're at right now, or the campground that we're at right now, which is called uh, Fireside Valley RV Park. And I'll show you guys a, a little bit about it. It's right on US or, or uh, Colorado, or I'm sorry, Wyoming 26. And you, you head out, out of the camp uh, site, campground, you make a left, and you go right into the Tetons. But uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see this campground. If you look over my shoulder here, you see off in the distance, that's the Tetons. Right over there. Absolutely beautiful. More, more mountains over there. It's absolutely gorgeous getting kind of cool too so that's actually cool uh, this camp campground that I'm talking about is basically a horseshoe it's just a horseshoe with the campers all the way around you see our spot right here and right at the front they have a gas station which belongs to the uh, campground they have a bar can't go wrong with that and they have a store to pick up supplies but we made it. We are in Tetons. We're going to bring you guys some uh, some epic footage, I hope, of the Tetons and Jackson Hole, Wyoming.
Good morning, guys. Good morning. It is another day. Yesterday, we arrived here in uh, Jackson, Wyoming. Actually, to be honest, we're just a little outside Jackson, Wyoming. We're on the other side of the park, a place called Moran, M-O-R-A-N, Wyoming. Uh, Moran itself is almost a non-existent town. They have a little school. They have a, from what we saw, they have a little school. They have a little post office, a fire department, and everything else is highway, and it's literally a mile away from uh, Grand Tetons. But we arrived, you know, did a few things around the camper real quick, and we headed out to uh, Jackson, Wyoming. Beautiful little town. Uh, we brought you a few uh, few pictures of the town. It, it, very expensive, though. Very expensive, and it's like a, uh, I don't know, to try and compare it. I don't know it, it, it's it's just a small little quaint town we had lunch over there and uh and we stopped at a few places but today is another day and today we are going to head out to tetons to the tetons and if you've been following along you know that when i'm wearing this hat we're gonna go hiking so we are going to go to tetons we're gonna grab a ferry a boat that takes us across a place called jenny lake and we're gonna do two hikes on the other side of Jenny Lakes. Actually, they're, they're two hikes, but they kind of connect. And that's what we're gonna do today. And whatever uh, pictures or videos I take of the hike, I'll share them with you guys. All right, so we made it inside the park. Our first stop is a place called Jenny Lake. Jenny Lake is, has a shuttle. It's actually a ferry that takes you over to the other side of Jenny Lake where we're gonna be doing two hikes. We're gonna be doing Hidden Falls and Inspiration Point. And the ferry, I believe, is $18 round trip per person to get you to the other side. Now. You could hike around the lake to those other hikes that we want to go do, but that's like a like an eight eight or ten mile hike. Uh, that's not going to happen. Okay, so correction: after talking to one of the gentlemen here at the ferry, it's two miles to walk from here to the trailhead, and then the two trails it adds an additional mile. So we decided that we're going to hike it. And then however we feel when we're done with the two hikes, however we feel, we'll either walk back and make it about a five mile round trip or we'll ride the boat. Um, probably gonna be the boat, I'll let you know.
right, so we're done at Hidden uh, Falls. And now we're taking the other half mile trek uphill to Inspiration Point Trail. There you go, Inspiration Point.
up guys? So I hope you enjoyed the footage that we brought you today from Grand Tetons National Park. But right now we're doing something different and we're doing it with some friends that we met from California. There's Greg, Krista, John, Hi. and Mark. Hi. And guess what we're doing? We're going to a rodeo. She's 300 million Americans strong and 300,000 churches where people go to worship where they see fit. From the roar of a crowd in a jam packed stadium to the hushed voice of a choir in a cathedral on an early Sunday morning. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what's so bright? up guys so you guessed it we are on another hike today as evident by my uh, my famous hiking hat we had a great time last night with friends which actually came with us today we're all together on this trail we are back at Grand Tetons National Park and we are doing Taggart Lake Trail which is about 3.8 3.8 loop but we had a great time last night at the rodeo 
and today is the last day here in Tetons so we're gonna do this loop and then we're gonna head back to the uh, to the camper tidy up tie up some loose ends and tomorrow is a move day but for now I'm gonna share with you guys a little bit of this trail Taggart Lake. What's up guys? So we are back from our hike out at Grand Tetons National Park. We did Taggart Lake. It was an epic hike. We got to do it with some friends that we met right next door to us. Greg and Krista and the two boys, John and Mark. Awesome family. We had a great time. It was a great hike. Four miles. You know that that's kind of like our limit. Four miles. But we are done. And like I mentioned earlier, today is our last day here in Wyoming. So this is going to be the final clip for the video but before we do that as promised we're gonna do the state of Wyoming because even though we're gonna go to Yellowstone National Park which is in Wyoming we're gonna be staying in Idaho but I'll explain all that later here we go let's do the sticker and let's get it out of the way hold on a second There it is guys, Wyoming is a wrap.